All right, well, I'm sure a few other people will trickle in, but we'll go ahead and get started just so we have plenty of time to answer any questions that you guys may have. So thank you for joining us for today's Getting Started with HR Technology with Kelly Gus from HR Full Circle. Before I hand it over to Kelly, just a few quick things. You are welcome to ask questions. You can submit those via the chat box and we'll have plenty of time to answer them at the end of the presentation. Or if there's something we need to address as we're going, we will cover that. You'll also receive a recording of the session. So if you're frantically jotting something down, you're like, oh, I missed that. Don't worry, we'll get you that recording so you can go back and listen to the session again. And then we do have some community partners with us today for the session, and I'll include links to all of their uh, organization's websites. So you can check out all of them along with the information that will lead you back to Kelly's website. So at this time, I'll hand it over to Kelly and we'll get started. Thanks so much, Jordan. It's a pleasure to be speaking with everyone today. Uh, my name is Kelly Gust I'm with HR Full Circle, a business I started here about four years ago. And we are gonna talk today about getting started with HR technology. Um, I'm excited to see so many of you, um, at least some of you interested on that topic uh, here fresh on a Monday morning. So um, good for you. I'm curious to hear about your needs. And um, as I'm getting started, I would honestly be curious just in the chat, if you wouldn't mind um, just dropping me a little chat and say, what is your interest in this topic? Is there a specific technology that you've been thinking that you might need? Um, and if so, I can try to spend a little bit more time in those areas because I will uh, address a couple of different types of HR technology. So just drop me a chat. Let me know what you've been, uh, you know, scratching your head about. What made you want to join this webinar today? Um, and like I said, if there is a specific type of technology that you're considering, let me know and I can maybe spend a little bit more time in that area. So shoot me a chat there if you get a chance. Um, and I will introduce myself while you're doing that. Um, my name is Kelly Gus. Like I said, HR Full Circle is my business. Um, I've been in business about four years. And prior to that, I spent about 20 years uh, in the talent management space of HR, everything from employee selection to performance management to learning management um, and some pretty big technology projects as well. Um, notably, I guess, kind of companies you might recognize in my background. I worked for Starwood Hotels for a number of years. Uh, I worked for a big utility company out in Southern California. Um, here, uh, as well as uh, in the retail space, uh, the headquarters of Hot Topic and Torrid for about three years in the mid 2000s. Um, here locally, some companies you might recognize, H.D. Smith uh, and Hanson uh, Professional Services based here in the Springfield area, which is where I am located. So um, throughout my um, career history, like I said, I personally, um, I would consider myself tech savvy, I guess, um, and have as such been kind of tapped for some technology projects. So learning management systems, um, recruiter or applicant tracking system type projects and upgrades. We did a big uh, global attempt a uh, big project in that space when I was at Starwood. Um, we did a lot of different, um, uh, um, again, learning management, payroll upgrade uh, projects, um, tracking, you know, um, automating personnel forms and things became paperless. Um, so lots of different options there um, that I've been involved with. And then when I was at HD Smith, in addition to implementing some of that technology, was involved in a big um, uh, they call it an ERP project, but a, a software called SAP that was actually helping to run the whole company. So I've been on both the technology side, I've been on the user side, I've been on the training side, um, and have experience with lots of different technology uh, in that space. So again, in the chat, if you're feeling, um, you know, like sharing today, um, please drop me a chat and just let me know what your interest in this topic is. And again, I can try to spend a little more um, time in that area and keep your questions coming as well. So far, no one has chatted me. So um, just uh, drop those chats in. I'm not seeing any come through yet. And Jordan, if you see any pop up, stop me and let me know. Um, what I plan to cover today uh, is it, why do you think you need technology? What would be a good business need for incorporating technology into your business? And I assume many of you are small businesses here with um, probably limited needs, but perhaps your plan is to grow. And if so, um, thinking bigger uh, can be a good option. So 
HR tech for NPOs or small businesses, limited motions. Yeah, for sure. Um, thanks, Angie, for sharing that chat with me. So uh, Angie says tech for NPOs and small businesses with limited budget. So happy to help you out there as well. Um, prioritizing your needs. We'll talk about that. How do you prioritize? There's so much stuff out there. You might think, where do I start? Um, how do you understand your own business needs? Where are your pain points? What might work for you? What might not? Um, and then I'll cover some of the most requested functions that I see, as you might expect, things like payroll and benefits software. Um, but there's lots of other things out there, too, um, that we will talk about. So um, and then finally, I'll share some tips and best practices, if you will, for implementation and um, happy to pause. In fact, I will pause a lot along the way and either ask you to chat in or, um, you know, we're not that big of a group. So if you're feeling real bold, uh, I might encourage you to even pop your little finger on that mute button and speak up. We can have a little chat. So I'm um, happy to make this interactive and um, uh, make sure you get your questions answered. So, okay. And thanks again, Angie, for sharing your thoughts. The rest of you, please uh, feel free to chime in. Um, so, you know, why, why technology, right? Technology can be great, um, but it can also be a real pain. So some reasons why you might be considering technology, of course, efficiency. Why waste your time doing manual things um, when you can perhaps automate or at least build some consistency uh, and repeatability into your processes? Um, you know, and especially, I think, a challenge for nonprofits uh, and for small businesses is what is the cost of time? We only have limited capital to invest, perhaps, but we also only have limited time. So what's the trade-off between, you know, the trade-off between time and money? I would say cost, quality, and time. That's probably from some project management class I took many years ago. But, you know, cost, quality, and time, you're always competing for the three. So, and you can only get two of them. <laughs> so pick two, cost, quality, and time. If you have money to spend, you can get good quality fast. If you don't have money to spend, you might have to uh, trade off on time or, of course, quality. Um, so those are all trade-offs there when you that might lead you to consider technology. Um, compliance. There are some areas of HR where you don't want to risk mistakes. Um, you know, safety training, um, personnel forms and files, benefits forms and files, leave of absence, things like that. Um, payroll, right? So you don't want to have uh, you know costly and time-consuming compliance issues that technology might be able to help you uh, to prevent. Um, analysis and reporting, being able to capture and track your data. Um, again, I can think of so many uses for this, but um, learning management, you know, who's taking training, who needs training, who's benefiting from training. Um, from a personnel perspective, who are we hiring? Are there trends in terms of where our applicants come from that work out better? Um, so those are all good uses of technology as well um, to improve your analysis and reporting. Um, and of course, you know, a couple more reasons here. Um, kids these days, uh, if you if you will, um, expect you know they're 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 coming into your organization tech savvy. They're going to be doing work while listening to music with headphones in and multitasking and jumping back and forth, and they're going to expect um, a tech savvy employer as well. So an automated application process, an auto automated forms, automated training. So there's lots of different things that your employees might expect as well. I remember not that long ago, um, starting a new position and being handed a stack of about 30 pages of paperwork to fill out for all of my benefits and everything. And then we had to do that every year when it was benefits enrollment. So it's just kind of a, you know, it makes you as an employer seem kind of old school and out of touch. And that's, that's just not a good look. Um, and then finally, your time as a business owner or leader is valuable. So it's tempting, I think, sometimes just try to keep costs down and do things manually. But if you as the business owner then it are wasting your valuable time when you could be out getting investors or getting sales, it's probably time to think where can you um, outsource or automate certain administrative type tasks in your business. So those are all good reasons why you might consider technology. If you have a different reason, again, why you are considering technology, definitely jump in the chat or raise your hand uh, or just, just speak up and uh, I'd be happy to answer your question. Okay, a couple disclaimers here. I was just trying to be honest and candid in uh, 
who I am and what my capabilities are. So um, I will say here personally, I am not an expert on all forms of HR technology. Um, my goal here today is to try to summarize uh, thought processes, options, tools, priorities, et cetera. Um, and nothing that I am going to present here today is an endorsement of a specific tool or product. I'm happy to give you my personal opinions on my favorite HR tech. Um, I have a newsletter where about once a year I do share some of my favorite things. Um, but that's just really kind of a personal uh, endorsement. It's not really uh, you know, a summary of all available tools and technology. That's disclaimer number one. And then disclaimer number two, of course, technology. We've all heard this expression, technology is great when it works. Um, again, as a business owner and leader, it is incumbent upon you as an owner of your business to start to understand your needs, um, the state of your industry, and make time in your schedule to stay up to date on trends in technology and in your industry. Um, I've worked in a lot of organizations with you know, large uh, uh, CIO, for example, an IT executive in a large company, they can't possibly understand all technology that it would take for a business. So as a business leader, you have to understand if you own a lawn care business, what do lawn care businesses use for technology? Um, if you own a bakery, what kind of good bakery related software is out there. And you might be surprised to learn what is out there. And again, as a business owner or leader, that is part of your um, your, your charter, your mission, your job responsibilities, if you will. So I will always say, you know, take the call from the vendor who wants to tell you about their great technology. You might not buy it, but it's helpful to you to know what's out there. So again, um, make time in your schedule. You might not do this today. Well, you are kind of doing it today because you're here. Put some time on your calendar at some point in the future. Are there vendor events? Are there webinars and conferences? Are you reading reports and review sites? Um, are you asking peers, even competitors, right? What platforms and tools are they using that either they love or they, they might loathe? <laughs> so that's useful as well. So do make time to educate yourself. I always say, I know it's always not a real popular opinion, but I'm sure you get tech vendors calling you trying to sell you stuff. Take those calls and then just say, hey, no, thanks. We're not interested. But um, definitely take some of those calls every once in a while and keep yourself up to date on the hot and interesting technology uh, in your industry. So, um, okay. Again, we'll press on here, but uh, I'll keep encouraging uh, the chat. Sorry, back click here. Um, so again, kind of before you begin and, and throw down those valuable investment dollars, understand your pain points. What specifically do you need this software to do? Um, you could Google HRIS, that stands for HR Information System, HRIS Business Requirements. Um, in the HR space, there are definitely um, one vendor can do it all kind of products, and there are um, specific, you know, uh, products that meet specific needs. For example, payroll software, and I'll elaborate more on this in future slides here. But um, so there are HR softwares, HR information system that can do everything from hire to fire, if you will. So um, post jobs, help you onboard, manage all your benefits, enrollments, manage your new hire training and onboarding. Um, manage compensation and salary review and payroll and succession planning if you want to go that far. So there are softwares out there that can do it all. Um, but if you Google HRIS business requirements template, that might be more than you bargain for, but it help you think through like, what do you need this software to do? And um, at least then when you're having conversations with a potential vendor, um, or evaluating a specific tool or product, you can look back at your notes and say, what did I, what do I need this to do? And hey, vendor, can you do this? I need it specifically to be able to post jobs for uh, entry level lawn care professionals on a Saturday and integrate and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so get specific and know what you're looking for. Um, another big thing I think you need to think about is what are your growth plans? Do you plan on adding locations? Do you plan on adding more headcount? Uh, do you plan on adding multiple layers of management? Those types of growth plans can help you understand, do I need something that's going to help me fit the bill now? Or do I need to be thinking two to five years ahead, right? If I plan on some rapid growth. So um, the other thing I always like to ask is, what do you have currently, right? If you're already using an accounting software, maybe you can build on that. If you're using document management software, maybe you can build on that. 
Do you have a CRM that you're keeping track of your customer relationship management is what that stands for? If so, maybe you can build on that. There are so many software vendors right now that start with one thing and then build on it. Um, that's always a good place to start as well. And then finally, I would say, um, you know, and, and Angie, I'm sure this will resonate with you a little bit here, but, you know, do the math, right? In, in most businesses, spending money on HR, I mean, I would argue is a good investment in the long-term growth of your culture and your business and doing that the right way, but it also does represent pure overhead. Um, your time, however, again, as an owner or a leader is very valuable. How much is that time worth? What else could you be doing if you weren't boggled down with this other manual stuff? And what is your real estate budget? Um, when people come to me also and say, hey, I'm thinking of hiring my first employee. What should I do? And I was like, well, what kind of budget do you have? Right? <laughs> That's going to help kind of dictate what you can get for the money. Um, so understand the answer to some of these questions here um, before you begin. So, okay. Again, I'll pause questions, chats, et cetera. Most of you are hanging in here. We might've even gained one or two uh, since we started. All right, so keep your questions coming in the chat if I am not addressing your specific question or if you want uh, me to elaborate, I'm happy to do that. Okay, let's press on. Um, so again, a um, couple of just options right out of the gate that I find, and I do deal with a lot of small businesses. I should have mentioned, um, I am uh, HR advisor to U of I Research Park. So a lot of startups that happen affiliated with U of I. I also am affiliated with Innovate Springfield here in the Springfield area, obviously. Um, and again, that's a business incubator, lots of startups, et cetera. So I do, and of course, I my clients, I deal with a lot of small business clients. Um, so these, this is the direction that I say summarizes most of the conversations I have. So scenario one, uh, you have some sort of accounting software or bookkeeping software. It probably also runs your payroll. Um, for example, in my case, I have a lot of clients who use QuickBooks Online, right? You do your bookkeeping, accounting, receipts, expenses. You can do a lot. Um, you also are doing then there probably your taxes, your workers' comp, your W-1099 or W-2 reporting, et cetera. Those soft, that software or any almost any payroll or bookkeeping software can be expanded then for automating new hire setup, tax forms, direct deposit forms, basic benefits tracking. Um, and that's a good approach if you have a small number of employees and you kind of plan to keep it that way. Um, so, you know, press that software to its limits if you have something like that and you don't plan on growing a lot or very quickly. Um, so that's a good option to get, get as much bang for your buck as you can out of that software. If you're a small business uh, or possibly a nonprofit and you don't have a ton of employees. And by not, I mean like mm, 10 to 20 ish, right? Start getting more than that. You've got more compliance requirements and you're probably starting to offer different kind of benefits. Um, so if you're a small number of employees and you kind of plan to keep it that way, I would say just squeeze as much, um, you know, juice as you can <laughs> out of your bookkeeping and accounting software. Uh, and that would apply um, Paylocity, Gusto, Paycor, Paycom, <laughs> um, so many of those, but like QuickBooks. Squeeze everything you can out of that. Um, expand it, ask what else they can do, talk to your vendor, um, have them help you maximize and optimize that software. That's scenario number one. Um, scenario number two, you keep your accounting or bookkeeping software, but you do bring in a separate HR and maybe even payroll tool that might then be able to handle more sophisticated recruiting, new hire onboarding, things like goal setting, performance reviews, compensation benefits, et cetera. Um, such a software usually will be able to handle a lot of your um, accounting and bookkeeping uh, tasks, but it's gonna be more scalable for that people side of your business. Um, and in a lot of cases, then what you're doing is you're um, feeding your payroll file into this new software, usually pretty seamlessly, um, and allows you to kind of manage users and headcount and logins and stuff like that. So it sounds complicated. It's really not as complicated as it sounds. And again, your vendors will help you get that set up and do that right. And at least they should, or you can look for a new vendor. 
Um, but this is a good option. If you plan to add headcount quickly, I would say don't wait until you're busting out of the seams of your QuickBooks or your payroll software, bring in a more sophisticated HR tool sooner. Um, that's my, again, that's going to help you grow your business and not be a limiting factor, right? It's like if you know you're going to need um, 20 gallons of water, I'm going to make up a goofy example. Let's say you know you need 20 gallons of water, get the five gallon bucket. <laughs> don't use little, you know, teaspoons to feed it over. You don't want to be busting at the seams. You want to maximize what you can there. So, um, you know, another example is like back in the day, we all had like, CD collections, right? I mean, I remember like I need a bigger, bigger storage for my CD collection. <laughs> like don't keep adding little options on top of it. Just get one big giant bookshelf and fill it up. So go for the big solution if you do plan to grow quickly. Hope that makes sense. Um, okay. Again, questions, comments, elaborations, drop that in the chat. So a couple common needs for growing business here. Um, here's five that I get asked about the most new hire onboarding. And I'm going to go through each of these individually here. So um, be patient uh, if any of these sound exciting, but um, new hire onboarding. So new hire paperwork, forms, um, benefits, enrollment, that kind of thing. I would put most of that under onboarding and that could be a business need that you might want to take a look at. Um, filing and pers the dreaded personnel file. So maintaining copies of online records, employee files and records, signed um, employee handbook acknowledgements, uh, wage deduction authorizations, things like that. You need to keep track of all that stuff. Um, leave of absence request, doctor notes, whatever it is. Uh, verbal warnings, <laughs> performance improvement plans, termination letters, all that stuff you need to keep track of. Um, document management would fall under that uh, number two. Recruiting is a common, 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 common um, need of a new and growing business. But and that even includes like Indeed, right? Are you, where are you posting your jobs? How are you keeping track of your applicants? How are you communicating with your candidates and scheduling? So that's a common need with new and growing businesses or any business. Um, performance is a common need. So that's things like uh, communicating goals and expectations, managing performance reviews, anything with like documentation or recognition built in would fall into that bucket. Um, and again, I would say managing schedules and benefits. So calendars, work schedules, time off, uh, health, dental, vision, retirement, uh, whatever else you can offer. So um, those are common needs. And again, if you have other needs there, let me know and I will address those or spend more time on them. Okay. Uh, seeing none, I am going to just go through them one by one. So the first technology need that I get asked about a lot is onboarding. A good onboarding program, approach, software, tool, technology should really help you roll out the welcome mat and avoid unnecessary completion of forms and tools and documents and paperwork. So again, as a business owner, managing the same types of manual enrollments, typing the information into your benefits enrollment, you want to try to automate all of that as much as you can and push it onto the employee. So some things that are included in a new hire uh, technology approach, your offer letter. How are you sending that out? Where are you keeping that? How are you acknowledging that? Um, the right type of tool or technology can help you automate that. Um, background checks can be automated through a software and integrated. Um, all those new hire tax forms and things like that. Ideally, a week or so prior to your start date, you're getting the ball rolling on those types of things. Um, I-9 can be done, obviously, in E-Verify. And then any type of company-specific forms, your employee handbook acknowledgement, your benefits enrollments, et cetera, um, your confidentiality agreements, your non-disclosures, <laughs> all that kind of stuff, um, you want to automate and keep track of automatically as well. You want to be losing that stuff, and you don't want to be typing stuff in manually. So... Common tools here are listed across the top of this table. Um, again, not an endorsement of any type of thing, but here's what I see a lot of small businesses using to try to build some efficiency into this area. I already mentioned QuickBooks, very common, um, good for new hire setup, managing personal information, tax forms, payroll, 
Um, it can handle your employees and contractors, and it really does offer you a lot of paperless options. In fact, most of these are these all have paperless in the column here, but um, things like SharePoint or Google Docs. I mean, if you are in that sort of scan and save mindset, that's fine too. But you know, Google Docs can help you with fillable forms, custom forms, etc. You can build, manage, customize, etc. It's pretty user friendly, um, and again, is going to be paperless and help you keep track of that information. Um, if you're scanning forms. Something as simple as, as SharePoint, you know, can help you keep track of that. And again, I, you know, if you're using Office 365, again, another example, use all of Office 365. Use all the bells and whistles. Don't stop with just Word or email. Squeeze as much as you can out of your Office 365 if you're using that or your Google platform if you prefer that. So get everything you can out of it. Uh, research what else it can do and make sure you're using that. Um, DocuSign or comparable. I, I know small businesses will use things like Zoho Sign and other platforms. Um, and then I included two kind of more traditional HR payroll options, but a Bamboo HR or a Paylocity would be more of what I would call a full suite HRIS, HR platform, and would really be able to help you with, um, you know, moving on down here, full HR capabilities, recruiting, benefits, performance, et cetera. So consider an HRIS type option like this, if you do plan to grow and scale quickly, I would be thinking bigger than just little patchwork approaches of a QuickBooks and a SharePoint and some DocuSign. I would just think bigger and try to automate. So um, let's see. And, you know, I will mention here as well with a, a platform like a, a Bamboo, a Paylocity, a Gusto, Paycor, Paycom, et cetera, um, they're going to charge you based on employee headcount. So you're only investing what you need as you grow. So you add users as you grow, and ideally, as you add employees, you're, <laughs> you're increasing sales and adding revenue, et cetera. And so, of course, your overhead is going to increase a little bit there, too. So, um, so it, um, that's that, the onboarding piece was kind of one that um, I was going to try to get into. Any questions about new hire onboarding or some of these other technology approaches here. Jump in if you uh, have um, any of those questions. So, okay. Um, personnel files, document storage, et cetera. Um, try to avoid any kind of paper form if possible. Taking the time just to recreate that form in a fillable fashion, Google Doc, even DocuSign, what have you, um, it's going to save you a lot of time. Um, scanning and storing is a good option, but of course, if labeling is key, <laughs> what, what is the scan document? Sometimes those scan documents show up with real generic names, and you have to just take the time to file them away appropriately. Um, if you do move records online, um, records retention guidance for your industry certainly applies. So don't keep things longer than you need to but do keep them as long as you need to. So, um, you know, and sometimes I would say as well, I see so many businesses um, spend a lot of time and, and honestly some frustration um, scanning and moving archival records, et cetera. If it's more efficient, it's okay to keep your paper files around for a while, um, especially if you're following records retention guidance. There are a lot of HR uh, records that you really only need to keep for three years, right? So that person doesn't work for you. You can purge some of those files and to keep them around forever. Um, so, you know, certainly paper files are low cost. It doesn't always take long to store those in a file, you know, file folder down the hall. And certainly that can keep your overhead efficient as well. So you can kind of balance out what your needs are. So uh, pause for questions. Seeing none, we'll continue. Um, Okay, recruiting is another just pain point, and I'm sure you can all res res that, that resonates. You can all relate, and it resonates. Combining two words uh, with the challenges around recruiting. So, if you have even one employee um, that you need to recruit and retain, uh, you've probably felt this pain. So, um, recruiting and candidate management tools can help you post your open, open positions 
Beyond post, I would even say advertise, broadcast, spread the word, right? You want as many people to know about your opportunity as you can. Um, they can also simplify your candidate screening, help you keep track of candidates, communicate with candidates, um, et cetera. I would throw out a little bit of caution in this sort of hot and rapidly evolving AI area. Um, there are lots of tools and technology that spin up very quickly. And you have to be able to defend your use of, you know, decision automating uh, technology. So like video interviews that are scored for you or skills tests is very tempting on Indeed to, you know, throw in four or five skills tests into your position. You have to make sure that any type of tool that you use to help you make decisions around your hiring reflects the knowledge, skills, abilities, and job requirements of your position. For example, if I have a restaurant server I'm trying to hire, I would not need that person to take a reading and writing comprehension test. That's not part of their job. Um, I might have them do basic math, right? But um, you have to be able to use uh, decision-making tools, interview questions, employment tests, et cetera, that relate back to the core requirements of your job. Just a word of caution around that. But good recruiting software can help you spread the word, advertise your position, attract the best talent, and make the process more efficient for you. So basic tools, again, worth exploring. Uh, indeed, I'm going to assume almost everybody's using that. But if you're not, then probably time to at least start there. So I would add maybe LinkedIn to that as well, if it's more kind of professional office uh, type positions. Indeed will help you with your postings, your invitations, your communication, your scheduling, your candidate statuses, your disposition if you decide to decline someone. Um, will help you automate that all in one place. It does require a little bit of budget to be able to get the most out of it, but that's always worth exploring. Um, tools like ZipRecruiter. Um, we use a tool called Recruiter Flow that we like a little bit better uh, then indeed it helps us manage all of our candidates from multiple sources. So we like that one. Um, and again, kind of any bigger HR software, if you do plan to grow and scale quickly, bring in more of an HRIS type platform. Here's seven of them, six of them um, listed on the screen. And those will include all the things mentioned, candidate management, applicant tracking, uh, status of candidates, et cetera. And these vendors will help you get set up. So those are a couple uh, listed on the screen here that I have have some experience with. And if you want to go really big, obviously there are bigger ones like Oracle, Workday, um, things like that, ADP. Um, so, uh, you know, again, if you plan to grow and scale quickly, um, I would probably be thinking a little bit bigger around HR management. I think a good, good tool or technology there um, will help you grow quickly and give you something you can kind of scale from. Okay. Um, all right. Another tools and technology here. I'll kind of keep pressing on, uh, hoping maybe you'll have some questions for me. Um, performance management is another area I get asked about a lot when it comes to HR tools and technology. What do I mean by that? Um, you know, thinking about how do you enable high performance in your organization, setting performance goals, um, being able to capture a check-in or a one-on-one, -on -one, if you will possibly with your agenda, what you might sit down and talk to that employee about and, and any of your notes. You might do performance reviews. Um, we've all seen paper performance forms. A lot of that's kind of moving online. Uh, development plans, recognition, employee surveys, et cetera. So when I talk performance management technology, usually uh, software platform will include those components. A um, couple of tools here worth exploring. Um, again, in addition to all of the HRIS tools that I talked about, some that I'm familiar with, um, there's a tool out there called WorkDove. Um, WorkDove is a strictly talent management type software. So it helps you with performance reviews, check-ins, employee surveys, goal setting, uh, et cetera. That's a great one. Um, and there's you know plenty of others out there. And again, your HRIS, uh, whether you're ADP, Workday, or any of these listed here, Paycor, Paylocity, Paychex, Bamboo, Zoho, Gusto, et cetera, so many of them, um, will also include some sort of performance management tool. 
So if you're using any of those tools, even for payroll, squeeze all the juice out of those tools, maximize your utilization of those tools. Even, you know, maybe you don't love uh, Bamboo HR's performance management tools, but it's already there. You already own it. Uh, you're already using them for payroll. Might as well use it, right? Um, you know, so again, squeeze all the juice out of whatever tools that you do already have in house. If you do use a lot of ongoing training, if you're in healthcare and have HIPAA, um, if you want to automate your annual sexual harassment prevention training, if you have a lot of safety training, um, I might then also supplement with some of the tools and technology listed here. Learning management system is that sort of that cluster of uh, types of technology. So learning management system might include something like a biz library, a Udemy, LinkedIn learning, et cetera. Um, and that will help you. Uh, Skillsoft is another one. Um, with not only a way to easily assign and track training, but also with the content. You have to have some kind of classroom stuff, you know, e-learning, whatever, to actually share. And most of these libraries will include the content and also perhaps even allow you to add your own if at some point you want to do that. So those are types of tools that would help you with managing performance. Hopefully that's helpful. And again, uh, stop me if not. Um, another type of technology I get asked a lot about is scheduling. How do we do employee schedules? How do we manage time off? Somebody was, was scheduled and they can't be here. <laughs> Schedule changes. What do we do? So, you know, I think if you're only looking at schedules, there's a lot of tools to manage shared work schedules and to set, to set and manage employee and communicate employee work schedules. Google Docs, Office 365, shared calendars, you can do any of that there. Um, once you start having even basic time off, like paid time off is usually a pretty entry level benefit. You know, if, if a company is thinking, hey, I want to offer some kind of benefits, usually paid time off is a good starting place um, that I see a lot. So again, QuickBooks time can help you with time off plans, PTO, et cetera, um, including accruing time off, communicating balances to employees, handling time off requests and approval. Um, so, you know, your accounting software, your payroll software, however you're doing that, can usually help you manage time off, including paid time off. Um, if you start to get more advanced than that, you want to start offering multiple time off tiers. Um, like, you know, if you've worked here five years, you earn more time off. Um, or you start having health, dental, vision, life insurance, et cetera, probably again, time to start thinking about an HRIS type platform or benefits platform. Um, here's a couple listed here on the screen, but that'll help you with all your other benefit types, requests, approvals, et cetera. Um, if you have a benefit broker, um, your benefit broker often has some kind of technology option there as well. So it's not always the case that you have to fill out paperwork for benefits. Your benefit broker often has some kind of portal that will allow employees to sign up and manage or change their benefits at any time. Things like beneficiaries, addresses, enrollments, things like that. So um, lots of communication tools and templates that they can help you with as well. So you have any vendors that you're using for a benefit that you offer. Uh, again, squeeze all the juice out of that vendor. What else can you do for me? How else can you help me? Uh, can we automate any of this? Do you have tools and templates? So put your vendors to work if you do have vendors uh, in any of this space. Okay, pause, time check, questions, etc. cetera. Uh, definitely share some questions if you have them. Um, okay, so those are some Tools and technology that I get asked about the most, again, from startups, small businesses. Um, I do have a fair number of nonprofit clients that I work with as well, uh, including a couple that I'm on the board of. So those are where I see a lot of pain points and people going like, help me make this easier. <laughs> so that was my list. Um, where do you start? Again, I would kind of point back, educate yourself. If you go to a conference um, for your industry, um, you know, there's always trade shows, there's booths set up, 
walk around and talk to those people, ask them questions. You don't have, to, I know it's scary sometimes to talk to salespeople. I don't like it either. I mean, it's actually kind of do, but um, you talk to those people, find out what they're doing. What are they selling? What are the best practices and educate yourself? Uh, read reports, review sites, third parties, um, maybe talk to competitors um, and make sure you understand your priority list. Where are your biggest frustrations and pain points and what, what do you need the software to do? So start there. Um, as far as like implementation, um, do keep track of your ROI. You know, it's 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 hard to spend money uh, on on this overhead sometimes in your business, of course. So do track your time savings, increased compliance, increased employee satisfaction, whatever metrics there that you have that you can keep track of. You'll feel better um, if you capture that data. You'll feel better about your investment and you'll feel more empowered to make additional investments as your business grows. So. Um, implementation, I think obviously is, is a big, scary unknown with technology. And I've been part of a lot of different implementations, but, you know, know your limits, how much help will you need? How much time will it take? What can the vendor do for you versus what will you have to do yourself? Do they offer training to you on their wonderful tools and technology? If so, make time for that training. You'll kick yourself if you don't. And make sure you offer that training up to your staff. Whoever else is going to be using this, empower them to learn it. Um, and then I always like to, when I'm talking to vendors as well, I always will ask them, what is their support model, right? If I need help six months from now, or if we grow or we acquire another business, how will we grow with you, right? What support will you offer us? There are some of these vendors that uh, make support very easy and there are some that make support very difficult. So do your research around customer service and support and make sure that six months or a year or three years from now, they will be there to help you and answer your questions. So my least favorite types of tools and technology is the ones where they route you to like the community forum or like other users answer your question. <laughs> I kind of prefer that they have an expert that will help me rather than relying on other consumers who also have problems. But do, do scout out the support model and make sure that the vendor that you select will be there to help you. Okay. So, I mean, those are some of my you know, this getting started with HR technology, where do you start? Um, those are some of my, um, I guess, tips and tricks and recommendations, uh, best practices for implementation, some things I think about, and the most common types of tools and technology that I get asked about. So um, if that did not address your questions, then we still do have a few minutes uh, for you to get those in. Um, if you prefer a more one-on-one -on -one conversation, my email address, uh, phone number, website is here as well. That's a landline. Don't try to text me there. Um, so um, if you shoot me a note or go to my website, you can subscribe to my newsletter as well. I'll be happy to uh, kind of keep you in the loop. And I, you know, I just enjoy striking up conversations with people and uh, offering help where I can. I'm not going to sell you stuff. So feel free to uh, hit me up if you have some questions. Um, if you're still out there in TV land and you, I didn't answer your question, then we've got a few minutes yet. So send them in. So, and you're welcome, Angie. I hope that was helpful to you. And if not, then, uh, you've got a few minutes now or shoot me a note or a phone call. So good, good. Okay. Brandy says this helped you from Googling. So do still Google. Google's not going to hurt, but at least now you could Google like in an informed way. So, <laughs> um, and if you are thinking of a specific need, again, I, you know, a consultation kind of falls under, um, you know, the umbrella, I guess, is our, my engagement here with SBDC. So I'm happy to uh, point you in the right direction if I can do so quickly. So yeah. And if not, then uh, we can go ahead, Jordan, and uh, I'm going to stop my share. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks yeah. everybody for taking the time to attend. I hope this was helpful. Yeah, like uh, Kelly said, all of her contact information was there, but I'll share that in the follow-up email. So I know like Angie, you know, working with other organizations and small business on your end, if you have someone who, you know, wants to connect directly, I'll make sure you guys get all of that with the recording. So if you're working with someone that wants to check it out, you know, and you guys want to go through it together, whatever that may be, I'll make sure that you have all of those resources as well. 
Yeah, for sure. And I'm, like I said, I'm always happy to do uh, just as part of my regular business. No, uh, the first phone call is always free. We can always chat for free. Um, and if it leads to some work that we decide to engage in together, great. And if I can point you to somewhere else that might be a better uh, fit for your needs, and I'm happy to do that as well. So. All righty. Perfect. Thank you so much, Kelly. Thank and thank you to everyone who joined us. We do appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye.